Welcome into the Cowboys Report presented today by Manscaped. They have launched the Beard Hedger Pro Kit. They can show your hair upstairs as well groomed as it is downstairs. All thanks to Manscaped. 20% off and free shipping when you use promo code COWBOYS over at manscaped.com. We're going to hear from Jimmy Johnson later on in today's show from the Super Bowl. We're going to begin, though, with the report that the Cowboys will tag Tony Pollard, which uh, this is a little, this is still in the rumor category, but it is in the logical rumor category as well, the way I'll describe this. Uh, Tony Pauline of Pro Football Network, which is, very much in the rumor side of things when it's all said and done, says that the Cowboys are expected to, to tag Tony Pollard. He also mentioned that a big pay cut will likely have to happen for him to stay, which is like, duh, we all knew this. This is mostly like lower level NFL people chit chatting at the senior bowl is what ends up happening there for the most part. Some upper level guys mixed in there. The franchise tag cost for Tony Pollard would be ten point nine million dollars. And that is less than the tags for the other potential notable free agents. No Terrence Steele on there because he's an RFA. Dalton Schultz, a second tag, would cost $13.12 million. Donovan Wilson would cost almost $14.5. That's more than J. Ron Kurse makes total on his two-year deal. And Leighton Vander Esch, because the NFL is stupid and does not differentiate between 3-4 outside linebackers, i.e. defensive ends, edge rushers, and 4-3 inside linebackers, a Van Der Esch tag would cost almost $21 million. It doesn't, it doesn't make any sense. The franchise tag cost for a running back isn't that bad relative to the highest paid backs in the NFL. It is just outside the top seven, or top eight, excuse me. What is troubling here is that there is a very real possibility that players like Ezekiel Elliott, Dalvin Cook, Aaron Jones, Joe Mixon, maybe even Al Alvin Kamara, could all end up being cut, and that would then suddenly, now the franchise tag is top five money at the position in terms of the per, per year numbers. So it's a lot to tag Pollard, who is coming off his best year ever, over 1,000 yards on the season on the ground, 12 total scores, uh, unfortunately suffered the uh, ankle and leg injury. Remember, on that injury, it was the ankle that required the surgery, a tightrope procedure. The leg is going to heal on its own. He'll be ready in plenty of time. Uh, for training camp, off-season stuff, etc. I'm not that worried about it, but it is at least an asterisk on the conversation. And the running back room in general in Dallas could look very very different depending on what happens this off-season with Tony Pollard. Do you bring him back? Zeke's not... We'll actually talk about Zeke later on. There are some... Uh, Interesting trade ideas we'll get to with Zeke from Bleacher Report, but Malik Davis didn't really get on the field when Pollard went down. I think a pretty clear sign of the actual level of trust the Cowboys have in him right now. We'll spend a little bit more time on Pollard here in a second, but I want to hear from you guys with today's pinned comment. What should Dallas do with Tony Pollard? Type in P for pay him. T for tag him and wait a year, or W for let him walk. Don't pay a back, period. It's the pinned comment on today's video, so head down there and get your votes in, especially if the ad break comes right here on YouTube. I would like to make note that a long-term deal should save money at least short-term. I think the range for Pollard is somewhere in that you know, 12 to 8-ish million dollar deal, the $10 million figure slots in there right in the middle. At minimum, you're going to have to give him 10 plus million guarantee because that's the franchise tag cost. I get all of that. I I am hesitant in general. It's a very tough conversation for me. I'm, I don't like paying backs big money in general, but a tag is also still big money and there's no flexibility short term. So I, I kind of go back and forth for a team that I don't really trust to get a deal done if they tag someone. The history lays it out pretty clearly. The, the backgrounds in green means they got a long-term deal done. Backgrounds in red means they didn't. They did not get a long-term deal done with Schultz. He played on the franchise tag. They eventually got deals done with Dak Prescott, Tank Lawrence, but it took two tags to do so. They got one at the, done at the buzzer, Des Bryant, the last time they tagged a player and paid him in the same year. They did it with Ken Hamlin, but Anthony Spencer got two tags and then walked. Ken Hamlin got a, got a tag and then got paid. The Cowboys haven't tagged a player and then paid them in that same offseason since 2015, and they've used five tags in that time frame. Now, they eventually did it the second time with Tank and Dak, but that kind of feels like cheating. So history says if the Cowboys tag Tony Pollard, 
they might not get a deal done. Now, maybe they wait till what happens in the draft, which, okay, you're then, it, but that would also mean you're investing doubly in the running back position for a year, and I don't... I don't love that idea. So it is, it's a dicey one as far as I'm concerned here for the Cowboys. Now, Manscaped is the ultimate franchise player this playoff season. To take your beard to the promised land with the new Beard Hedger Pro Kit. The package has made it easier than ever to craft your signature look and is a premium beard sculpting machine. Led by the Beard Hedger and its cordless trimmer, it has one guard with 20 different lengths and is waterproof. No more drawers of 20 different guards or even different heads, and shower shaving is now as easy as your heart desires. Do whatever else you want in the shower, by the way, as well. The Beard Pro Kit also comes with three gifts beyond their shampoo, conditioner, oil, and beard balm, a beard brush, a comb, and scissors to ensure your beard is ready to impress and make the clutch play in crunch time. Get 20% off and free shipping with code COWBOYS at manscaped.com. That's promo code COWBOYS at manscaped.com for 20% off and free shipping. Avoid the blitz and take your beard to the promised land this year with the Manscaped Beard Hedger Pro Kit. Link and promo code are in the comments section and in, in, in the description of today's show. Let's go to a bearded player, Ezekiel Elliott. That was an unintentional but perfect transition. Bleacher Report, and I can't wait to do this one, has put together some trade packages for Ezekiel Elliott. Now, again, Elliott is allegedly open to taking a pay cut, and we've said this for over a year now. There's zero chance Ezekiel Elliott is back on his current almost $17 million cap. There's no way the Cowboys are going to pay that amount of money, nor should they pay that amount of money. Now, I'll make note, as we'll see in a second, the proposed trade value is very interesting, is the word I will use there. Before we get to the three different Bleacher Report trade ideas, I want to hear from you guys. Does Ezekiel Elliott have trade value, period? Is there any, even a seventh round pick trade value for Ezekiel Elliott? Type in Y for yes, or you can type in N for no. Now, again, the, these trade ideas are bonkers. I'm going in saying this, and I'll explain why in a little bit. I think Zeke Elliott has zero trade value. I don't think there's any team out there that wants to actually give up assets for Ezekiel Elliott. That's, I don't think that's where we're at at this stage, so you have to keep that in mind here. So, I think no. Let's look at what Bleacher Report has here. All right, the first two trade ideas are all pretty similar. Bucks get Ezekiel Elliott, Cowboys get a third round pick, number 83 overall, or you ship him to the Chargers and pair him up with Kellen Moore, I guess is the argument there. Cowboys get number 86 overall. So we're roughly valuing Zeke as a third round pick, which, where do I sign? I would do that so fast right now, the league office couldn't process it quick enough for me. The other trade idea that Bleacher Report cooked up is the Cowboys get Jalen Ramsey, the Rams get Zeke, a second round pick, and a future fourth. So we're basically, val I, th I would say Jalen Ramsey has first round pick value and more. And so we got Zeke as a third, and now we're giving basically a third round pick for a second and a fourth round. Like, oh, these are shit trades. I'm sorry. These are awful trade ideas. I would love to do them. I have zero faith in the in anyone with a brain actually doing that around the NFL. I'm baffled how that got by the editors. I would do all three of those trades in a heartbeat. If you could give me a fourth round pick for Zeke, think about it this way, folks. Zeke Elliott is coming off his worst year ever. Now, the Cowboys don't save that much money with a pre-June 1st cut or trade. The money's the, sa the same here. A new team would owe Ezekiel Elliott $10.9 million this upcoming season, and it's got some other years that are not guaranteed after this. Who here wants to pay Zeke Elliott $10.9 million for under four yards a carry? I, I don't, nobody wants that. It's not how good teams do business. Not even Bill O'Brien's doing that. So this idea that I could get Jalen Ramsey for Zeke a second and a future four, I think is one of the most ludicrous things we will see this offseason. And it is hilarious that it actually got published on Bleach Report. So it's not happening is what I'm saying here. 
Now, in the event that Elliot ends up getting cut, we will have you guys covered, or he takes a pay cut. Those are infinitely more likely outcomes than a third-round pick for Zeke and a train. Come on, guys. We've got daily Cowboys updates for you guys right here on the Cowboys Report. So make sure you are subscribed. Free videos every single day once, or once you subscribe to the Cowboys Report. Now, some of the Chat Sports crew, those who cover the Eagles and Chiefs in particular, are down at Super Bowl Media Week. And my guy Harrison Graham, who you've seen before here if you've been subscribed for a long time, had a chance to catch up with Cowboys legend. Well, he's actually too good for that bit. Jimmy Johnson, the Hall of Fame coach. Here's some of what Jimmy had to say on the Dallas Cowboys. I think the Cowboys are a talented football team. Obviously, they've got to get you know, some help at receiver you know, outside of C.D. Lamb. Uh, they got to work out the running back situation. Pollard, I guess, you know, they could franchise him to keep him because he's extremely talented. Uh, Micah Parsons gives that defense a chance every single week. They've got to position themselves to win enough games during the regular season uh, to get home field advantage and possibly get a bye. Do you like McCarthy taking I, over play calling duty? I, I, I think you know, that, that gives them a shot because now you got one voice rather than you know, I'm sure Mike had some differences with Kellen Moore as far as which direction to go. Uh, I think Mike will do a, an outstanding job. Now, they got their work cut out because Philadelphia is strong and going to be strong again. Not too much to disagree with there on or from Jimmy Johnson, I should say. Good points. I'm hoping that Jimmy's right, that it's one voice in the room leads to better results on offense between Mike and Kellen. I think there were some differences of opinion, we'll call it there, for what they wanted to do on offense. And he also mentioned franchise tagging Tony Pollard. Before we get to some news in the Cowboys, the most important question of the day, or not question, maybe more of a statement, Jimmy Johnson unquestionably needs to be in the Cowboys' ring of honor. I think there's a bit of a curse there. If you agree, I want you to flood the comment section. Type your me's right now if you think Jimmy Johnson has to be in the Cowboys' ring of honor. Some minor news notes before we go. Three more futures deals officially announced earlier this morning by the Dallas Cowboys. Isaac Alarcon, the offensive lineman. Seth Green, the tight end. Malik Jefferson, the linebacker, joined the now 12-man list of futures deals for the Dallas Cowboys. The other players who we've mentioned before, Dontario Drummond, Antonio Callaway, Dennis Houston at wide receiver, Alec Lindstrom, Brock Hoffman at center. Go ahead and push that. Alex Taylor, offensive tackle, Sheldrick Redwine, safety, and then other safeties, Wanye Thomas, Tyler Coyle. So 12 futures deals in total. This just kind of helps fill out the back end of your roster. These guys will fight for a roster spot at the end of the preseason or maybe training camp there. Just young guys the Cowboys want to keep around this offseason.